Hi, this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk. I'm from unboxings.com and here I have something a bit different. Uh, this is obviously not final or full or anything like retail packaging, but in here we have the LG Optimus 3D. Now it's a little while ago and uh, just about to come on sale here in the UK. And this one actually came from our friends over at Clove Technology at clove.co.uk. Uh, where it's available for pre-order. Currently, um, I think it's sitting at just over £450, uh, including VAT here in the UK. We're going to take a quick look anyway and uh, see what we have to offer. So on the front, first of all, we have a 4.3 inch display, 480 by 800 pixels. It is a stereoscopic display, which we'll look at in a bit, uh, bit more detail in just a moment. Forward-facing VJ camera on the front and uh, just on either side of the LG logo there we do have uh, ambient light sensor and proximity sensor and just above that we have the speaker itself. Underneath, capacitive uh, touch buttons so we have the menu, home, back and search buttons which are pretty much uh, um, as expected really on an Android phone um, at the moment. On the left hand side we have covers over a micro USB connector for sync and charge and next to that there's a cover over a micro HDMI so that we can output uh, to our large screen TV, projector or whatever have you. On the bottom just a tiny little hole and a cutout, the hole being the layout for, for the microphone and the cutout for taking the back cover off which we'll do in just a second. Uh, on the right hand side we have a, oh no it's not a QE obviously, it's 3D, a 3D button and uh, then we have up and down volume control so uh, that's there too. There's also another little hole on top which I suspect may be a second microphone. Then we have power button and then a 3.5mm headphone connector for using, um, well obviously 3.5mm headphones, standard headphones and presumably when it comes to retail there will also be um, a wired headset that comes with it uh, along, alongside so that you can actually uh, uh, use it in a sort of a hands-free capacity. On the back we have dual cameras so that we can actually take stereoscopic photographs and record uh, 3D video. The cameras are 5 megapixels apiece and they are autofocus. In the centre of the two we do have uh, an LED flash. Uh, we can take ordinary photographs so it will obviously just use one camera. Um, but if we use the two cameras it's obviously as it says on the back 3D stereoscopic. There's also a loudspeaker grill just at the bottom there too. Back cover it does pop off like so. So we have the battery already in place. As you can see, it's a 1500 milliamp hour battery and space for the SIM card. Battery needs to come out for the SIM card to go in, and then here also a space for a micro SD HC memory card supporting up to 32 gig micro SD HC. Um, I suspect that a memory card will come with the final retail, but uh, really, in terms of what size that's going to be, uh, well, at the moment, I guess it's anybody's anybody's guess really as to uh, what size that will be. It might be different uh, retail um, or SIM free as it will be on contract. Uh, so let's just power up and there we go. While we wait for that to come on, run down the specification for you. Uh, quad band for GSM, tri band for HSDPA, it will work pretty much everywhere uh, throughout the world when you're roaming and everything else. Uh, in terms of size, 128 millimeters from top to bottom. Uh, it's just over just over 68 millimeters wide and just under 12 millimeters thick. Quite weighty, 168 grams. Um, and in terms of uh, the sort of uh, competitors out there, we obviously know that the HTC Evo 3D was announced earlier this week too, um, and it's of a similar sort of size to that and similar sort of weight. Um, although the Evo is a little bit more um, chunky, a little bit thicker, but uh, that's. Uh, in terms of our um, you know, competitors for this particular um, space in the market. As I say, 480 by 800 pixel display is capacitive touchscreen, multi supports multi-touch and uh, does obviously have the 3D um, aspect to it too. Um, I think it's parallax barrier uh, in terms of the 3D technology rather than lenticular, um, but uh, well, we could confirm that at some other point. There's a 3D user interface that's actually been uh, preloaded onto there as well. Again, we'll take a look at that. Um, in a moment, we have 8 gigabytes of built-in storage and 512 megabytes of RAM. 512 meg of RAM doesn't sound like a great deal, especially when we're talking about a high-end device such as this. Uh, with a 3D display, 3D user interface and all that sort of stuff. 512 meg of RAM seems a bit light. Uh, it's dual-core 1 gigahertz processor, um, which uh, we will hopefully benchmark as well. 
but um, again how that stacks up against competitors well we'll uh, find out in due course um, built in uh, wireless supporting it 0211 BG and N standards we can record uh, 1080p video in 2D or 720p video in 3D uh, with the dual cameras on the back as I say Wi-Fi support 0211 BG and N standards built in uh, GPS uh, supporting assisted GPS built in FM radio um, all that kind of stuff uh, that uh, is kind of the norm these days it does have Bluetooth 3.0 as well so, let's welcome us to our new device. It's, uh, as I say, the LG Optimus 3D or the P920 or P9, uh, P9, LG P920, as you can see there. We'll continue with the setup. And uh, let's select our language. It's uh, already set to United Kingdom, as you can see at the top. And we're going to select kind of all the standard stuff here. We're going to add a Wi Fi network. In fact, we're not. We're going to actually skip through that for a second and skip through adding the accounts. Let's get to talk about email initialization, which uh, we're going to skip. So we've got uh, Facebook, Twitter, and MySpace for LG. We're going to skip those setups just now because uh, we haven't uh, set up a Wi Fi network and we'll skip out the wizard there. Okay, and it's uh, telling us how that we can use the uh, interface here. So when you first start up, it's very similar to other LG handsets we've seen recently, say the LG Optimus Black, for for example. Um, so we do have um, sort of the home screen is very familiar with the weather. Almost every Android device seems to have weather anyway. So we've got 3D space, Gmail market, and camera application, and underneath that, phone contacts, messaging, and applications. We can swipe across to another panel uh, with favorite contacts, talk, email, alarm clock and calendar. Another one for social networking, kind of a bit like um, the friend stream thing that we have on HTC phones. Uh, a blank panel the other way, and coming back all the way the other way. So we've got Google search with vo voice search, uh, browser, 3D games, music gallery, YouTube and Rich Note. We then have a calendar set to, uh, uh, which also has a gender view and another blank panel. With the blank panels we can obviously add in additional widgets. One thing that I quite like about uh, LG's user interface is that we do have it arranged into these sort of grid squares so when we add an application or a widget, uh, which I will do now, uh, it shows us how you know how much it's going to take up but then it also allows us to sort of snap that to the grid around the display so it kind of uh, just works quite well. I think it's a nice little kind of uh, feature for the, the user interface. Uh, pinching on the home screens we've done there does take us into this sort of helicopter view or overview uh, which shows us all of the uh, widgets uh, running on each of the pages of the home screen um, and we'll go back to the middle one being the main uh, and we're back out of there because we were in midget view you know, to applications and again we can uh, we've got 3D applications standard applications and then all the way at the bottom we have downloads uh, in terms of what we've got here, we've got 3D camera, 3D gallery, some games and some 3D space. Let's Golf and some other bits and pieces all also in 3D. They're definitely going to be worth a look. Um, some standard applications, including the web browser and all that kind of stuff, Facebook and finance, LG World, messaging, uh, Twitter client, weather, what's new. There are you know, lots of standard things there. Going back home, let's go into the menu and we go into settings and I'm going to go and connect to a Wi-Fi network so let me just sign into a Wi-Fi network as you can see there we've got a fairly large QWERTY keyboard uh, the 4.3 inch display lending itself to having a large, uh, a large keyboard uh, well spaced out, not a standard Android keyboard um, it is um, specific to this handset um, but uh, let's go ahead anyway Okay, and uh, we've well connected very quickly in actual fact, so we're connected to our Wi Fi network. So if we go back home and we go to add cities and things like that, we'll actually. Uh, okay, let's go and uh, select that. Well, there we go. So we can add the weather. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, some of the installed applications. 
So first of all, I'm going to stick to the non-3D stuff. So we've got a web browser, which uh, I'm going to go ahead and check it out. So there we go. So we'll see how quickly that loads. As I always mention, we're using Wi-Fi over broadband, so the load speed should be quick. Um, rendering speed is really going to be what we're seeing here. So page is loaded. Uh, we'll see all of our articles are there. Um, the display is really quite good. Um, even even with this sort of zoom level, uh, look at the full page width. Text is uh, reasonably legible. I can even read the small text within the individual articles, but I can double tap actually zoom in, double tap to zoom back out and then we can use two fingers to zoom in and out um, as you can see there. Um, one criticism I am going to make, bearing in mind that this is um, actually um, a pre-release handset and not final in any way shape or form but uh, hopefully we'll get this sorted out button. I if you can make out there this sort of uh, yellowy orange blob on the display and there's another one just down the bottom here which is a little bit more difficult to make out but it's just sort of a, a colouring uh, on the display which is uh, the display isn't perfect uh, I think is what really what I'm trying to say here um, whether or not that's down to the way it's been screwed in and there's a little bit too much pressure at different points of the display actually distorting it but um, I think you can probably make out just at the top there there is a sort of uh, orange blob and one down there as well but uh, you know, as I say bear in mind this is not final it's uh, pre-retail we turn around this way, obviously have it working in landscape quite nicely and the rotate speed using the accelerometer or G sensor is really rather rapid and so is the zoom, the zoom is nice and responsive uh, probably partly down to that dual core processor. Going back home, we're going back into the applications uh, we'll sign into Android Market and we'll just download in fact, sorry, we won't create, we'll sign in. We're going to go and download Quadrant to do a benchmark. Okay, we'll just sign in. And you can probably make out that orange blob that I mentioned earlier on there, a little bit easier with the background. So we'll do the finish setup, we'll accept. And here we go. So we've got apps and games. Sure you've seen these things before. Um, Gmail has also signed in because that uses the same sign-in as Android Market. We've got my apps here. So we've got a few things that I've already yeah, pre-downloaded on other handsets. But we're going to go and have a look at Quadrant. Uh, we'll download the free version of Quadrant so that we can actually do a quick benchmark to see how we perform. Swiping down at the top will actually tell me downloads and the fact that we've got a uh, notification there with Gmail telling me that uh, Gareth has added me on Google Plus uh, Quadrant has stand downloaded and installed and obviously while we're also in here we've got uh, we can turn it into mute, turn Wi-Fi on off, Bluetooth, GPS and synchronization on off there's also media controls there as you can see we'll just swipe that closed, go back home and go into applications and down the bottom we should have downloads. So let's uh, take a quick look at Quadrant, run a full benchmark, and let that run through. I uh, should just mention that uh, you know this uh, this is uh, going to give you just a rough indication of the performance. Again, not being full and final. ROM versions may change, um, and ROMs can become more or less efficient. Uh, conversely, but uh, in general terms, um, ROMs might get actually faster, and this just is it just gives you a taste of what the handset is going to be like. Um, really, it's just a raw number. But let's take a look anyway. It seems to be running through pretty quickly. Uh, frame rate down the bottom there is uh, getting close to 60 frames per second. Again, there it's also getting close to 60 frames a second in the animation. So this is testing 2D, 3D performance as well as read-write of the memory. Um, and raw processing performance and things like that and we'll just connect to the internet in order to get our score 
So there we go, we've got our uh, device results there. If you can see that, it's orange or white on orange. So uh, that's actually 2,597. That's a good score actually. A, one gig, two, a dual core 1 gigahertz processor, um, but that is still benchmarking faster than the HTC Sensation, which has got a 1.2 gigahertz processor, which should, in theory, just going by the numbers, uh, be about 20% faster than this handset, which uh, it's not. This one is the faster of the two. Just going by the benchmark again, I must point that out. Uh, one thing that's nice again about the interface on the LG is that we can collapse down the items that we've got here. So rather than having a long list, we can actually collapse it down so we can actually then just open up the individuals and we can open them back up again. Um, one thing I will just go and take a quick look at is YouTube again just because we always do and it gives us a sort of a, a bit of a benchmark in terms of performance so looking at my YouTube channel Leo D we'll just grab there we go the first one and see how quickly we buffer buffer time is longer than average again this could be down to internet performance as much as anything else um, I would have expected that to have started playing by now already so uh, the buffer, buffer time there seems to be a bit long let's just uh, try something else anyway there we go and that buffer time is a lot quicker so maybe that's just a one-off this obviously video an older video that looking at the iPhone 4 Rotating this way does give us obviously a full screen view and bring it back the other way. I say the actual performance when you're actually rotating the display uh, or rotating the handset and rotating the display is extremely good, so that's promising uh, in terms of how it's going to perform a real world. This is a software update there in the corner. So let's take a look at some of the 3D applications. Obviously, um, using a camera for the unboxing video as I am that has only one lens or one camera isn't going to really well in any way demonstrate um, what the 3D display is like it's not really possible to simulate but nevertheless uh, I'll tell you what it's like we're going to use the 3D camera first of all and there we go I'll turn this around one thing that I should definitely mention is the 3D effect only works in landscape so you have to have the device landscape in order for it to work in any way, shape or form. And so let's bring this in like that. Um, if you have seen the Nintendo 3DS, the technology here is very similar and the effect is very similar. You have to have your head and eyes squarely onto the handset, which the way I'm standing here would be like this. But in order for that 3D effect to work, you have to have your eyes uh, sort of horizontal and the handset you know, in that same plane in order for it to work. Now, um, I can tell you that the 3D effect is pretty good and pretty interesting um, in terms of how that's working, and certainly as I move the handset closer to the object, the 3D effect becomes more significant and noticeable. Um, there is a little bit of fuzziness, but again, that's just down to um, kind of display technology that's in use, um, and just the nature of the sort of 3D technology but um, you certainly get quite used to, used to it quite quickly um, and it's quite interesting if we push the button on the side now we've actually switched to 2D and back to 3D one thing that is fairly significant about um, 3D display technology uh, in general uh, is that um, you'll notice the, the, you'll probably notice a significant difference in brightness so within this 2D mode, the colour here is fantastic, absolutely incredible for my naked eye. Um, the richness and the brightness of the yellow and contrasting to the red and the blue is exceptionally good. We'll take a quick snap. There we go. Uh, so the brightness is really good. And if I press the 3D button and I switch back to 3D mode, let's go back to camera, switch back to 3D mode. Um, the brightness is significantly reduced. I'm not sure if that's coming across in the actual uh, video here, but the brightness is um, significantly less. That's because um, effectively 
half of the light's going to one eye and the other half is going to the other eye. So uh, that's why you sort of get that difference in, in the effect there. So that's the camera. And we'll go home. Um, just push the 3D button while we're in the home screen. And there we go. Uh, we do have this 3D interface, uh, which is rather nice. It's sort of uh, this Rolodex style interface. Again, only works in this orientation. If we turn it the other way, uh, although obviously the video camera is going to pick it up, my eyes cannot see that as being 3D. It just kind of looks fuzzy. Around this way we have it. So we've got a 3D guide. We've got YouTube 3D. That's going to be interesting to take a look at at some point. 3D gallery, 3D camera. 3D games and apps, um, that's a 3D guide. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the 3D gallery. Again, um, fortunately you're not really going to be able to see too much of this. Um, you'll just have to take my word for it. So you, obviously it's coming across as being a bit fuzzy, but we have stuff that's uh, recorded on here. Some sample images that uh, do look rather cool, rather interesting. Again, parallax barrier is um, uh, in, in very much in play here, so uh, the orientation and getting used to um, the actual display takes maybe a second or two. Um, I think that, to be honest, if you were to look at um, 3D all day long, I reckon that your eyes are going to be pretty strained at the end of it. But there are some interesting things on there which are also accessible if we just do it that way as well, rather than just using the uh, 3D button on the side. But we can get to those through the applications. There's a series of 3D games, uh, which is actually taking me to the web so that I can download them. We'll not bother with those right now. Uh, we've got Asphalt 6. Game Loft, let's see if that, how that works. So, we've got a bit of a load time there. I'm and uh, we'll wait and see what happens. Okay. Well, hopefully that should just start. No, that's not particularly looking good. Well, we'll uh, fast forward most of that out of the video. And uh, let's just see if there's anything else on there that we can take a look at. Gulliver's Travels, I'm, I won't bother to go into any other games. They might take a while to load too. In terms of other applications, well, you've got other things on here like Google Maps, clearly not in 3D, uh, news, phone, uh, in terms of the dialer. It might be important to take a quick look at that. So we've got this uh, large large buttons on there. Obviously, the capacitive touchscreen means it's nice and easy to get hold of. And a 4.3 inch display means that everything is just large uh, on on the display. It's generous, it's a decent size, um, it's really good to see everything set up that way. Um, I think uh, I'm kind of getting used to these larger displays as personally. Um, going back a little way, I would have thought that uh, 4.2, 4.3 would have been ridiculous, but now it just seems to be becoming the norm. Um, and the benefits, obviously, of having a larger device is that you've got the larger display as well. So it uh, makes web browsing and photographs and video and all that sort of stuff um, just a little bit more exciting and uh, a little bit more viable. Uh, in terms of the other things, let's just take a quick look at the settings. And we'll just take a look at the About the Phone. And we'll look at the software version. So Android 2.2.2. Um, that is going to be up got updated to 2.3 uh, very soon according to the information I have here. Um, possibly even uh, before it goes full retail, I don't know, but I suspect that will be updated pretty quickly. It's uh, something I think most people are going to feel that's pretty important for that to be uh, certainly up there with the later versions, 2.3.3 or even 2.4. Um, I think people are going to really want to you know, sort of more or less insist upon it. Anyway, there's a very quick look at the LG Optimus 3D or the LG P920. Uh, at some point in the future we will have a full review for you. I will not be reviewing this handset as it is uh, very much pre-retail. Um, so we'll wait until we've got a retail or uh, a very close to retail handset available to review. 
which uh, is a little bit more realistic when it comes to doing the full review. Um, that review will be available as soon as we can get our hands on a full review handset. In the meantime, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash tracyandmatt or facebook.com slash tracyandmatt.co.uk. Please do feel free to uh, tweet, follow us, get in touch, ask questions about this or any other handsets that we are uh, playing around with at the moment. We'll uh, obviously do our best to give you any advice or answer any questions you've got. Uh, I'll be back soon, though, with some more videos and reviews on tracyandmatt.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching.